direct from Montreal, Canada. This is Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Welcome to another episode of Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Uh, joining me on the phone to get things started, it is uh, the one, the only guitarist extraordinaire, Frank Hannon. Uh, bonjour, Frank, as we say in Montreal. How are you? Bonjour, Mitch. It's an honor to be on your show again, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. And uh, folks are going to realize that we're going to go a little quickly here because uh, you have something to do in a few minutes and so do I. So we're just going to get caught up. New single out right now called Southside. Uh, talk to me about this. Is just is this just sort of one and done or is this one of many singles to come? Is there is there a, a plan behind all of this? It really wasn't planned. It just came together kind of naturally when a, a, an old friend contacted me that I haven't talked to in 40 years. My old, my very first drummer, John Barry, and he sent me some pictures of our first gig, and uh, that's what inspired me to put this song together. Wow. So, so now, is there going to be sort of a, a, a second, third, fourth, fifth single, or is it just one? Really, was it was this inspiration, and and we're just going to leave it at that for now. Oh, no, man. I'm going to be cranking them out, man. You know me. I'm a rockaholic, dude. I mean, I love Tesla and I love what we do, but on my own, I, I go crazy and I have a lot of creative uh, ideas and things that I do on my own as a singer, um, storyteller, singer. That's why I do the Far Out podcast. And I, you know, I just, I, I have too much energy. So I've got a new single that's going to come out uh hopefully next month it's called ride strong and i'm in the process of working on that it's about my uh, adventures of riding horses and how you have to stay strong in life i apply that philosophy to life you got to stay strong through some hard times and uh my good friend kelly nobles is a drummer uh one of my favorite drummers in a band called rail have you ever heard of rail before I have not heard of Rail the band. I've heard of Rails, uh, you know, on a train track, but not, not of the band. Uh, no, worth checking out. No, look up, look up Rail the band uh, from Seattle, Washington. They're from the '80s, and uh, Kelly Nobles is one of my favorite kick-ass double bass drummers. And we're putting that together uh, right now as we speak. So my next single's coming out uh right now it's all about south side and my next one will be a song called ride strong so let's talk about this uh podcast far out with frank hannon now of course the the, the podcast space or or environment is filled with different shows what is it about that far out that that stands above the pack or that that is different than others what what can fans expect from the far out podcast far out with frank hannon podcast <laughs> well it the the original concept was for me to find musicians that get outside the box and do other things besides music. Like Jesse James Dupree, my first interview, he makes a Jesse James Dupree whiskey, right? And myself, I'm making a double IPA beer, and I'm experimenting. Just the idea of doing a podcast alone for a guitar player is a, a something that's out of my normal box. Um I do a lot of different things like I ride cutting horses and, and I'm, I'm actually doing a charity cutting event here in December where it raises money for cancer patients. And that takes a lot of balls, man, to get on a horse and walk into a herd of cattle and it takes a lot of practice. And I'm going to talk about that concept, but that's what gave me the concept for far out things that are outside of what you normally do. And I'm going to talk to people that are not famous. Like there's a guy that works up here at the feed store who's a bodybuilder and he's my age, man. And he works his ass off competing in the old men's bodybuilding contest. <laughs> so to me, that's a little far out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Hey, listen, I'm a perfect candidate. I am both uh, old and not famous. So it's perfect. Um, it, you are going to be an honored guest. <laughs> you, I'm going to call you back and I'm going to interview you for a change, my brother. That would be great. Now, one of the other things uh, that came up recently is uh, the great Frank Marino of Mahogany Rush announced a tour of the U.S., this first tour in, I don't know, like 20 years or something. Um, you, of course, had a chance to spend some time with Frank in Montreal this summer. Just quickly relate for the sort of the Montreal audience working with Frank and what it is for you to see him actually back on the road and like, Hey, this guy is going to do it again. Oh my gosh. What an inspiration, man. That visit to Frank's house for me was like just so heartwarming. He was such a gentleman, invited me in. We had pizza. We stayed up all night talking about music and actually other things 
again, far out uh, things that were outside of music that he was sharing with me about his beliefs in, 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 in spirituality and in science. What an amazing guy, man. He's like a scientist, Frank Marino. In his, in his basement, he's got these electronics that he's building, and he breaks it down, man. And now that he's going out on tour again, I, I'm actually thinking about looking at his dates and blocking them off on the calendar and telling the Tesla guys, hey, guys, I got to go see Frank Marino play. Uh, sorry, I can't be there. You're, you're going <laughs> to you have know, to. This time. Now, let me ask you, as a guitarist, because, you know, you've done Tesla for all these years and, 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 and fans talk about you. And when there's guitarist lists, you show up on them. But what is it for you to see somebody like a Frank Marino? Do you learn anything from him? Was there a technique that you do are things that you don't understand and you saw him play it at his house where you just went, oh, OK, now I right. Was it a learning experience as well? It was a total learning experience on a different level than guitar, okay? Like, yes, of course, he's one of the greatest guitar players of all time, and he was he was singing me some songs that he wrote that had never been released that, that are really, like, Beatlesque, like, killer pop songs that he never released. But beyond that, what I love about Frank Marino is his just down-to-earth attitude, and he just don't give a... Can I say the F word on here? You certainly uh, can. He don't give a fuck, man. He does it his way. And that's what I learned, man, how important it is to have that integrity and keep it real and do things your way. And you're, I mean, do things how you can go down with pride and integrity of doing, having that integrity. And that's what I learned from Frank, man. And actually that carried over to me on this break at, here at home, recording Southside, the song, that's totally real to me. And that's what I learned about Frank Marino, man. He is totally real. And I've never met him before. And that was a, a really uh, a big eye opener to spend that time that I did with Frank Marino and how real he is and how he just does it on his terms, man. Yeah, he really does. And of course, I know we're going to run out of time, so we'll finish with this. Uh, you've got a, a Frank Hannon solo show at the Whiskey A Go Go on January 24th. Um, what can fans expect? Because I, I think some fans go, well, it'll just be Frank doing the best of Tesla. And I'm assuming myself that it's not going to be Frank doing the best of Tesla. So so talk to me about that show. And will there be a lot more or many more uh, Frank Hannon solo shows? I'm always uh, going to be performing as an artist. I don't even like to use the word solo artist because it's not about that uh, uh, for me. Right. Um, it's... It's about whenever Tesla's not working, I'm always going to be doing other things outside of the box that I can't do with Tesla, like singing and writing my own songs, uh, jamming. Uh, the show at the Whiskey, I'll probably have uh, a, a young guy coming with me that's my new protege, guitar player guy. He's going to jam on some songs with me uh, and stretching it out and doing stuff that I I can't do uh, in Tesla, which is like a lot more improvising and singing, really. And I'll, I will play a couple Tesla songs, but I'll be playing the majority of my, my own catalog, including Southside, I Have the Mind, Electric Warrior, Touch of Magic, and stuff like that. There you go. And I know you've got to go, and so uh, I will be right back. And uh, Frank, always a pleasure. And uh, as we say here in Montreal, merci. Thank you. Hey, I want to say I had a great time in Montreal. If you're in Montreal, go see my friend Joe Hell. He's a killer guitar player. Yeah. Go see my Steve, go see Steve Creep. Uh, you know, I love Montreal. I can't wait to get back. Yeah, and Mitch, a- I love you, buddy. Thanks for the support. Always, and we'll talk soon. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Ever wonder what Vince Neil would sound like if he was a black belt in Taekwondo? What, what about what his favorite McDonald's menu item is? Just hold the pickles. This is Rock Talk with Mitch LaFond. Speaking of Vince Neil, what is Motley Crue doing in 2020? They've got a reunion tour with a, a mystical mystery fourth band, but, uh, you know, you know, you're not going to have to wait much longer to find out who it is all happening, uh, well, in December. I'm not going to tell you the date, but it's happening in, uh, in December, and uh, no... Uh, it is not, um, well, it's not Tigers of Pantang, which, by the way, have a new album called Ritual, which is by far the best album of uh, 2019, if you're talking about hard melodic rock. Anyway, uh, let us get over to somebody else 
that has a new album. It is a puddle of mud. Their new album is Welcome to Galvania. And I sat down with a singer, Wes Scantlin, to discuss that and a lot more. And so, um, hey, let's just get to it. Here is uh, the one, the only, the indefatigable Wes. We are speaking to uh, Puddle of Mud's Wes Scantlin. The new album is Welcome to Galvania. It came out in September. Fans have been digging it. Everybody everybody I talk to says it's great. I've listened to it. I think it's great. Uh, Wes, uh, as we say in Montreal, bonjour. Welcome. How are you? Uh, ça va, ça va, ça va. Ça va, ça va, yeah, good. So, I don't know, comment ça va? <laughs> très bien, très bien. But it's it's great to, to have you uh, to have you here. We, we've tried to connect twice before. It didn't work out, but here we are, and that's all that matters. So where do you want to start? Should we, should we just dig in into uh, Welcome to Galvania and putting out new music? You, you did, of course, have Rediscovered eight years ago, but that was a covers album. Talk to me about yeah. 2019 and sitting down and saying, okay, we are going to put this collection of songs together. What, what was the songwriting process? Was it, do you look back to the old albums or the older albums and say, we need to capture the classic sound? Or is it like, hey, no, it's 2019, man. We're just going to do whatever feels right. Yeah. I mean, basically, you're, you're pretty much right about that. I mean, um, there's, you know, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on in my life. So, um, you know, and I was I was co-writing with a lot of different people, and um, and you know, I just had to get everything kind of like you know, I I had to get the heck away from a lot of things. So, um, and in the meantime, within all that stuff and the wildness, um, songs were still being written. So there was a there was a ton of songs that you know didn't make the record, but you know, we were uh, you know, it just we. It, the songs have to be hooky from top to bottom, you know? So we were trying to just pick the right ones that just had like an undeniable, you know, presence of, of, of great structuring and great melodies. And, you know, just, just, I don't know. It's just songwriting is crazy. <laughs> it is. Well, okay. So you, you mentioned that there's songs that didn't make the album. Does that mean that you have sort of a, a collection of songs that you can get out in, you know, 2021, so we don't have this big gap again, or are these songs just really so not good that forget it, you got to start up from scratch going, going forward. No, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of songs that are, you know, that are really great songs. Um, that was just, uh, kind of like, you know, letting the lion out of the cage and just, you know, going for it. And, um, it's definitely not going to be, you know, eight, nine, 10 years for another record. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we picked some pretty awesome songs and, uh, we're really glad that everybody's really, you know, responding to them, you know, very, very awesomely. It really is. So, all right. So let, let's talk about this. Listen, your, your struggles have been, uh, well documented on different music websites and stuff like that. Uh, where are you in terms of, of sort of life? Is everything sort of settled down and we're good to go? And when you book a show, it's going to happen or are there still yeah. something? Okay. Um, yeah, well, we're going to make the shows, um, you know, that's bottom line. Um, sometimes, you know, the um, sometimes um, the weather doesn't really allow us to make it to some of these shows. <laughs> but fortunately, we, you know, I, I just leave like a day ahead of time and make sure that I get to this, you know, get to this, the show a day before. So give you another day to kind of get there if you don't get there immediately. Yeah, and you know it's it's funny uh, up here we we have a club called uh, the Brass Monkey, which also was the obsession up in Ottawa, and they've booked you before, and th they've always loved you. You know the guys there, Scotty yeah, and Dion, I love that place. Lo they love you. They 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 are like, oh, what the hell's wrong with Wes? He's perfect. Everybody. So no, yeah, you, you know it, it happens. Um, talk to me. Yeah. A I, I do want to go back a little bit to this rediscovered album, also this this um, a covers album that you did back in two thousand eleven. Uh, talk to me about some of those influences because you're you're to me uh, you know the uh, sort of a, a later '90s, early 2000s artist, and yet you're going back to Elton John, you're going back to Bad Company, you're going back to Led Zeppelin. Talk to me about some of your influences, and and going so sort of far back into the sort of '60s and '70s, and not having sort of more, yeah. you know, you're not covering Poison and Motley Crue. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, you know, when I, I mean, I was growing up, I mean, I listened to all that stuff. I mean, my parents, my, even my grandparents were like, you know, 
influenced by different different uh different bands and different artists and stuff and you know i'm mean, straight from you know inside the womb to outside the womb i mean you're 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 soaking up all kinds of different um artists and stuff your whole life and you know every single artist on you know the rediscovered album i you know had been influenced by my entire life so um it was definitely um definitely a really fun record to make and it was definitely you know one of the hardest records to make you know um just like you know led zeppelin you know dire maker that's one of, that's like the least amount of lyrical content yet like very very kind of it's kind of you know crunch time kind of like it's just the way robert you know kind of did it you know just going with the flow um you kind of got to get the flow but even bad company was really a, a pain in the butt to to do um it, a lot of it was really really kind of hard to do man but um you know we powered through it and got, got it finished and it sounds really good you know yeah it, it's a great sound album so so let me get back to this new album welcome to uh, galvania you, you know come clean comes out and it's a top 10 success life on display comes out it's top 30 top 20 even at this point, do you feel like you're starting over and having to sort of reprove to the audience that this is a band that you should really get into, or is to you it's more of a continuation and you just sort of say, "Hey, this is just the next step." How, how do you sort of see it? I think it's a bit of both. You know, I mean, I lost a lot of a lot of you know, kind of like uh, trust with the, you know a lot of people. So um, just to get back on the good ship, lollipop, you know, <laughs> you know. So, it was a struggle, but, um, you know, doing very well now. The whole band is like, you know, we're just, we all get along and, and, um, we all love playing together and stuff live and, you know, rehearsing and everything. So, um, everything's, you know, everything's going great. And we're really proud of the, uh, proud of the record and the response that it's getting is just awesome. And, you know, we couldn't ask for anything better. You really couldn't. So, so talk to me about rebuilding the fan base trust. Is that something that you do just by, showing up and doing a great show or do you sort of have to go the extra mile and do you know free meet and greets you have to have another album out in yeah. 2021 what what sort of the the how do you get that trust back you know you just you make the shows play great stay on the straight and narrow um you know how to change my playgrounds playmates people that i don't run with anymore um you know like i i terribly hate to say this but hell hath no fury um <laughs> a woman scorned um i probably should have never ever got married and um i should have followed my own rule but i broke my own rule and i got married and it just didn't work out and it was a it was kind of a disastrous situation that was very depressing and um you know it kind of got the best of me so that's that's not going to happen any anytime soon again Good. Well, good. Because, uh, you know, the fans love, just want to see the band. They love the songs. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the importance of making new music. Because, listen, I just mentioned you had a top 10 album, a top 20 album. You could easily show up at a place like the Brass Monkey and play the best 10 songs, the best 15 songs, and the fans would be there. Why is it important for you to come up with Welcome to Galvania and say, hey, yeah, we've got those hits, but, but we've got this? Yeah, we got more hits, man. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's definitely been based on a galvanic kind of a skin response type thing. Um, you know, make the, you know, the hair stand up on the back of your neck and gives you the goosebumps, you know, because it's like you kind of it's really, really feel the music and it's really just kind of hitting home in your heart and your soul, you know. And, um, and, it's, and it's, you know, I go out of my way all the time to just, you know, just to sign autographs and talk to people that are fans and, you know, um, thank God for the fans. I mean, you know, it's just amazing. My family's also been really, really amazing and, uh, you know, keep God first place in your life and, uh, everything else just falls in line, man, you know? It does. So talk to me a little bit about that, because you are sober for what, a year and a half, two years now? Yeah. And you and you talk about God. Is that something that's part of this sort of the the, the AA twelve step program, or did you sort of come back to one? And how does it all sort of come together? 
I just totally believe in, in a higher power and God is my God. And, uh, he is totally real to me. I mean, I totally believe that God is watching after me and, uh, he has me surrounded by angels and, and, um, and they're just, you know, they got my back and, uh, I pray to him every day and, uh, just thank him for everything and all the blessings in my life. And, and, and the sobriety is going, is going well. It, it's going great, man. Everything's going smooth, man. Yeah, and and I gotta say, as a as a rock journalist, I I wish you nothing but 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 greatness and and well, and I hope the album does super great because we we need the music, you know, we need music around. It makes people happy, and so uh, you know, I support whatever you do, and just you know, keep keep doing it. I will, man. Believe me, this is, I I love to be a songwriter. I love to be you know touring and. I love recording. I just love the whole part, you know, the whole entire, everything about just being a songwriter and an artist. It's just fun and it's saved my life. And, you know, along the way, I've probably helped out a lot of people and uh, God bless everybody, man. And, you know, just, you know, keep music dear to your heart. Yeah, and isn't it great to have that realization? Um, in uh, June of 2019, the New York Times reported that there was a big universal fire in 2008 and Puddle of Mud lost some material uh how much of the how much of your material or unreleased stuff or released stuff or masters was affected by the universal fire i don't know i really don't know um i'm sure it was very you know i'm sure it was an accident um i probably will be one of the artists that doesn't take universal to court and uh and file a lawsuit or whatever against them um i just basically look at it as an accident. It wasn't really anybody's fault. And it just was something that got out of control that couldn't be stopped. And, uh, you know, um, I'm sure that it was stored somewhere, uh, digitally and, uh, I'm sure it's, you know, all the tracks and all that stuff are, are still salvaged and they're not really lost forever. That's interesting. It's interesting to me that you don't sort of want to ascribe any blame to them and sort of just see it as an accident. Do, do you think that they should have been more, cautious in how they stored it and made backups and have sort of like three different places where there's sort of a, a redundancy or eh, shit happens and shit happens. Somebody could, they could have had an employee that was bitter. Um, maybe somebody got like, you know, got kind of canned and kind of fired or something and just like, you know, wanted to, wanted to retaliate or something against their, against their company. And, uh, and, you know, I don't know. It's pure speculation on my part, but, um, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, they've done amazing, amazing things for me in my life. Universal has always been there, um, for me and, and my band. And, you know, I, you know, I feel for them and, um, I, I'm definitely not going to pursue any lawsuits against them ever in my life. Well, I have to say that that's real refreshing because I've asked this question to a bunch of different artists and they've all got the knives out and they're sharpening them and they're just like mother, you know, so good. It's a nice yeah. refreshing attitude. Um, I do no, wanna... I will not do that. No, good. Well, because uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you probably should be grateful. I mean, you know, listen, you, you have a great life and it's partly what the work they did. Um, band members. You have, yes, of sir. course, uh, switched band members over the years. Talk to me about some of those changes. Now, the, the guys in the band now, are, are these the guys you sort of want to ride out to the end with? Or does there does it sort of give you a creative spark to got it, to have a new guy on drums and have a new guy on, on, on bass and have a... How do you sort of see it moving forward? Um, I, you know what? I'm super, super happy with, you know, everybody in the band. Um, you know, we all get along really well and everybody's really creative and, um, you know, ideas are ideas and, you know, everybody's got different ideas and different ways they would look at some way of a song kind of, you know, being created. And I'm super comfortable with all these, you know, everybody in the band. And, um, I, I really would love to just ride this out with the, these guys, man. Cause you know, we just, we're just all really good friends and, you know, we're just, keep rocking and we pray together and we go play as well as we can play and um you know hope that everybody has a good time at the shows well listen going back to the brass monkey and, and ottawa they they love your shows um let me talk to you about the pressures because the last album as we said was 2009 volume four 
going into this one, knowing that you had some starts and stops and you put a single out and then nothing and then this and that, how much pressure was there to make this album and not only make it, but make it great? Was this sort of, is this sort of a do or die album? If this falls, you're done. Like how much pressure did you feel? Um, it was getting dicey, man. But, um, you know, that was just kind of like the, the, the peeps I was kind of chilling with. And, you know, I had to like get rid of these, you know, get rid of these certain people in my life and just kind of basically just, you know, gravitate towards people that were really, you know, really cared for me and were, you know, you know, just, just careful about my best interests and stuff. And, um, and I'm just, I'm super proud of this record, man. I know I spent a lot of time working on it and, um, you know, I'm glad it turned out as well as it did. And uh, we'll try to beat it on the next record, you know, sooner than eight or nine years, you know. Yeah, let's hope. Now, with all the sort of starts and stops, was there ever a time in there where you just said, fuck it, I'm done? I'm going to pack up my ball and go home? Yeah, I did that a few times. <laughs> but uh, nobody really nobody really wanted that to happen. So, you know, all those people got what they, they wished for. Because <laughs> I could I could have retired, bro. You could have. And, and, and you did. Yeah. So, okay. So you, you didn't no. retire. So what, what kept you going then? Because listen, it, it was not exactly easy. Well, I didn't want to go out, you know, I didn't want to go out like looking like a, a joke. So it'd be better to go out on top. So we'll just keep, you know, shooting to the top. I think the uh, psycho or I mean, uh, Oh, just, uh, uh, just recently broke the top 10. So we got another top 10 hit single. The, uh, video for, uh, Oh, Last week was the number one uh, rock video of the week, um, which, you know, me and my family and the band, we all did in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, we had a great time doing it. And, um, you know, we just got done doing the uh, the, the, the next video shoot and, uh, in Kansas City, and, um, you know, we're going to release that really soon. But the uh, Uh-Oh! song is, is just, you know, still kind of climbing the charts, which we're psyched about. So um, we'll have one in the can to, uh, to to unleash very soon. Okay, so let, let's talk about the about the single. Uh oh, it really is you bearing your soul and sort of. Would you consider sort of a letter of apology to the to the fans? I mean, you're you're, you're very straight. You say you fucked up and I fucked up again. Yeah. And, uh, talk to me about that song. Is, is it an autobiography? Well, the funniest thing about it. The funniest thing about it is. The other songwriters involved in that were also telling their stories. So it's the combination of, you know, three, four people, you know, all of our stories all crunched into one song. So, um, but it always, like, it comes back to, like, everybody kind of lives the same life. Everybody kind of messes up and, you know, everybody gets uh, caught in a, in a, in a web of insanity and, you know, you know, drugs and alcohol and, you know, just, just bad relationships. So everybody that wrote on that song, it's basically about three, four people in their lives and they all coincide together. Like art imitating life, imitating art, you know? And, and it's imitating it for three different people. That's, uh, that's actually kind of a, that's kind of cool actually. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the stories in that song, um, they, they directly like kind of like look like it's all me, but it really actually is about their little time that they had when they were screwing up, you know? Yeah. And I love the, I love the line. You can take the cat, but, uh, you know, never take you the dog. You can take the never. cars, take the house and the cat and the dogs, but whatever you do, just get out of my life, man. It's over. <laughs> no, you keep the dogs. Let, let them take the cats. Oh, and uh, before we start wrapping up, uh, Come Clean, the uh, the first album, uh, it came out of the box, a roaring success. Talk to me a little bit about that, because here you are, this band, you're struggling, you're doing the clubs, you're doing the whole thing. Uh, talk to me about putting that, the, sort of the memories of that first album and, and, and having it come out and then realizing, hey, shit, it's not just mom and dad that likes this. Everybody fucking likes this. It's Talk to me about that sort yeah. of roller coaster ride and that, that upward climb well fortunately you know i i somehow magically went to a show in kansas city before i was moving out of kansas city the next day and i had a demo tape and fred durst the you know the the founder of limp biscuit 
and also the president of Flawless Records, um, I had gotten that demo tape to his security guard backstage with a fake backstage pass. Um, Fred Durst had listened to this this demo tape, and I had already left town the next day. I got a phone call from from Fred Durst two weeks later when I was in Mobile, Alabama with this girl that was the stripper. She was like a feature entertainer and we were picking up her daughter. I was moving to New Orleans and I got a, I got a page and then I got a phone call and it was Fred and Fred said to get to New Orleans and fly to Los Angeles. And he was uh, super stoked that he was going to sign me and I was going to be the first, uh, first artist that he has ever signed. So, um, from that point on, it took about a year and a half, two years, but Fred Durst and uh, Danny Wimmer and Jordan Schur from Geffen and uh, Jimmy Iveen and, and, you know, everybody from Universal, uh, you know, everybody like helped rebuild the band because I just got, I basically got signed by myself. So, um, you know, I totally just appreciate and just, am just f- stunned at the awesomeness of Fred and the uh, the 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 passion that he had to uh, to build the band back up and to release another you know release record you know a, a puddle of mud record to the world you know so he he totally like made that happen yeah he did and and it's funny you know I was I was specifically not going to ask you about Fred because you famously had a Canadian interview back in the early two thousands where you just sort of went. I just stop fucking asking me about Fred. He doesn't write our songs. He's and so so you, you've obviously I was, rolled. I was hammered, man. I yeah. was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> but but you've rolled that back now, right? You you sort of got yeah, to a point no, where you... I feel I feel like crap for saying that, you know. But I was just, you know, that was just uh, that was the booze talking, man. You know. <laughs> but but it does get to a point though with some questions where you just got to sort of have enough right I mean, not necessarily fred but there's got to be reporter questions where you just go really again it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a single person you know only dating one person i guess you know whatever but you know that definitely the booze talking that day and uh you know i feel like a shithead for it fuck it and you know two tears two tears in a bucket motherfucker, it and i got nothing but love for fred uh i I probably wouldn't even be speaking to you on this phone call right now if it wasn't for Fred and his devotion and passion for for music and uh, and just helping to you know guide and you know guide the band in the right direction. I mean, when when it was all said and done, you know, we were always looking to Fred for guidance and you know somehow to put something over the top. You know, so I can't wait to work with him again. And, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, <laughs> I guess it kind of screwed everything up for a minute, but I think we're all good now. We're going to be playing a, a free show at the Roxy on uh, Sunset Boulevard, um, for, uh, Toys for Tots and, um, Limp Biscuit and Puddle of Mud are going to do a show together at the Rox- Roxy for free Oh, that's for, their, cool. for the Toys for Tots. That's very Yeah, cool. that was like, yeah, he, you know, he's totally he's totally awesome, man. He really is. And uh, you know, I wouldn't have none of this shit if uh if it wasn't for that guy, man. See, this is what I like to hear. First of all, I I've met Fred twice and he's always been incredibly nice, but it's nice to hear that because you look at some of the interviews you've done over the last 10 years and there was anger, there was bitterness, there was fuck Fred, fuck Universal, fuck it. And now it's like, you know what? Yeah, you know. I wouldn't be west without without these guys. So good it's, it's nice no to hear. i would not it's it and it's good to hear now and, and i'll ask you this uh last time i spoke to a dave mustaine he said once an addict always an addict how yeah. how how sort of scared are you to be on the road or, or what do you what do you do to protect yourself or like is it is it a scary place to be out there knowing that there's booze in all these bars and knowing that there's always a fan that's going to say hey come on dude i've got how do you sort of keep yourself straight and is there a fear that that doesn't you know that's not a it's the road is a very healthy place man believe me um if you i mean i guess you can make whatever you make whatever it is but the road is like a really healthy place for for me man um because basically um you know physically you're constantly wanting to protect your vocal cords and your and your health 
And, you know, after so many years of abuse and stuff, you, you, you know, all of a sudden your body's like breaking down. So you have to just, you have to just avoid that stuff. And, um, and it's, it's really not that hard to avoid it. You know, we, we, you know, we fly in and we, you know, we have like our own rooms and everything and we just keep to our own selves and we're all just like a little crew, man. We in the van, we're just like kind of roll four guys, man, you know, just, and we just stay away from the, the outside, you know, the outside craziness, you know, and it's really not that hard, you know, um, cause I don't like waking up with a sore voice, man, believe me. And nobody else in my band does either. It's, it's way better to get a good night's sleep, drink tons of water, prehydrate, hydrate, uh, and just keep, you know, keep, you know, nourished and, uh, and keep nutrition in your life and, you know, stay away from all the bad stuff that gives you like, you know, you know negative, uh, negative reactions in your, in your life. Well, okay, let me uh, let me finish with this. I'll ask you just quickly about your voice because uh, you're not exactly, you know, Paul Stanley's age or, or Rob Halford's age, but but as you get into the 40s and stuff, the voice does get a little bit drier and a little bit. What do you sort of yeah. do to protect it? Is it are you noticing changes? Is it harder? I don't smoke anymore. Okay. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't I don't do any drugs anymore. I don't I don't do anything. I just like. Uh, I just try to keep my, you know, straight and narrow path and just, you know, and just stay away from any lurkers or any bad people that want to, you know, get you involved in doing anything that's going to, you know, kind of like, you know, screw your, screw up your, your momentum. So just basically just stay away from, from the lurkers, you know? Well, listen. Whatever you're doing, it's working because uh, Welcome to uh, Galvania is not just the next album. It is actually the next great album. It, it really came out great. It, it's it's not rehashed. It's not reheated. It's, you know, it's not like a two-day-old pizza. This is a fresh, fresh album. And, and Wes, uh, congratulations. It's, it's, it's great. And it's nice to have you back. And it's nice to have you sounding the way you're sounding today, just full of energy, full of life. And, uh, you know, as we say in Montreal, merci. Thank you for today. I appreciate you, Mr. Lafon. Thank you, and uh, let's do it again soon. And when you come, uh, when you come to Montreal or Quebec, uh, lunch is on me. So there you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cheers, sir. Merci. Bye bye now. All right. This has been Rock Talk with Mitch Lafon. For more exclusive content and interviews, subscribe on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, and many more. Follow Mitch on all the socials, especially Twitter at Mitch Lafon, and on Instagram at Mitch underscore Lafon. Get your Mitch merch now at loudtracks.com slash Mitch.